these um, all these headlines are now saying he's denouncing tithing. Tithing. He's not. He says you're, it's not a fear fact. You're not cursed if you don't give ten. He was like, you would need to give according to the way you've been blessed. I agree. He said that he had other. Oh. Praise the Lord. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our Bible study. It is going to be a really juicy topic tonight. <laughs> Let's just say that. We're really excited about being here. It is our topical Bible study, and um, uh, as on Sunday, Pastor gave us the, the topic that we were to talk about, and of course, um, back on June 26, um, Pastor Creflo Dollar uh, talked about how tithe, tithing, uh, we're now under the dispensation of grace, and how tithing is no longer a requirement which, of course, now has everybody uh, up in arms about his teaching because we know that tithing has been, is a tenet of our church. It is the, it's a principle of how we give, and it's what we've been teaching from the Old Testament of Malachi and even in the New Testament when Christ refers to tithing. And so um, we're going to be talking about that tonight. We want to get your questions. We want to get your comments. First off, welcome, welcome, welcome to our topical Bible study. You know how we'll do it. We'll dig into our headlines first and, um, and then we'll get into our teaching. I'm really excited about it because now we never really harp on finances here at Capitol Temple. Pastor Jamie is not that type of pastor that will, you know, always um, badger you to give. And we're looking for a certain number, so we're doing an offering again. And how many people got $100? You don't see that in our church. You don't see um, her. She teaches the principles of tithing and then she wants you to be able to give based on what you've been taught she is sitting next to me so let me speak to my pastor hi pastor Jamie <laughs> I'm like speaking to you in the third person like you're not even here <laughs> hello 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 listen welcome welcome to our topical Bible study on tonight we are excited about this particular topic on tonight and look forward to to just getting into it and answering uh, or doing our best to answer any questions that any of you may have. We understand that giving is a is a biblical principle. Mm -hmm. Whether you call it tithe, whether you call it offering, sowing a seed, whatever it is, it is a biblical principle. And so we do want to dig into it a little bit on tonight just to dispel uh, some of the rumors that are out um, and some of the gossip that is out concerning uh, what Dr. Uh, Dollar said. Mm -hmm. So welcome to our topical Bible study. Um, we want, I want to get started with prayer, but let me just welcome a few folk. I see a lot of my friends, uh, Atlantis, hey sis, I see Sabrina, I see Earth, I see Robin, I see all of you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Listen, join into our conversation. Of course, if you um, saw this clip of Dr. Dollar, or if you've heard about it, or if you've seen people talk about it, I really want to hear, I want your questions, because we want to be able Absolutely. to address them um, from our perspective, right? This is your opportunity to ask the leader of this house, to ask our shepherd of this house um, I, what we believe here at Capitol Temple and what we believe to be biblical and how we've always operated here in this ministry so that you don't have a question about what's going on, okay? So, Pastor, would you mind um, getting started with prayer? Absolutely. And then we can, jump, we can jump right in. Absolutely. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you. We thank you always for life, for light, and for love. We thank you for the opportunity that you afford us, God, even to come before you on tonight. Father, we ask that you would lead and guide and direct us, God. You said if we acknowledge you in all of our ways, that you would direct our path. Word our mouth, give us what to say, that what we speak comes from your heart, not from our opinion, and not from what we think it should be, but what you really desire from your people in this season, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. So I really wanted to pull the story from ChristianPost.com because they broke it down. Um, would, you, um, would you just give a brief synopsis, Pastor, of what you heard when you first heard about this teaching, when you first saw what folk was saying about it. Talk about how you felt as a, as a leader. Talk about how you felt as a pastor um, when you heard um, what people were saying about it. Well, when I first um, actually heard and or saw, it was on Facebook and I saw just a post that said, uh, Creflo Dollar, uh, denounces tithing or repents for, for t his teaching on tithing. And um, my first thought was, okay, I need to hear that mm -hmm. to make sure that, because um, one of the things that I don't want to do, because I don't, I don't want people to do it to me, is just take a clip or a snippet of something I've said mm -hmm. and make it my whole life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, without having an understanding of what I really meant. So I actually went and looked up the entire teaching mm -hmm. and I was able to listen to him and understand mm -hmm. uh, where he was coming from and wholeheartedly um, agreed with many of the things that he said concerning mm -hmm. why he changed his teaching, mm -hmm. why he felt it necessary to come from a different perspective, and even um, to open that door. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, um, I did the same. Now, I, I, you, of course, work in media, right? So I know how people take the headlines and make it sensational, right? right, right. And how they will, they'll take a slug line or they'll take something from the headline, from what a, a scenario has, so that you can click on, it's like clickbait, right? Right. On, on, you know, oh, he's denouncing this, he's denouncing. So a lot of people started going to social media without even watching a clip. And I'm like you, if this is the buzz, this is what's going on, on, and this is what I'm reporting, even um, on my on my radio show. I want to make sure that what I'm reporting is factual, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not just a sensational headline. We already know that mainstream media is always looking for a twist when it comes to Christian belief, right? right. They're always looking for a twist, something that's going to cause controversy. Like I'm, we're looking at now um, praying for Pastor John Gray. Mm -hmm because he's had um, a number of blood clots and uh, pulmonary issues and his wife literally went on to ask. And so those same people that have been bashing him, the same people that's been putting him in the tabloids, that's been exposing him, you know, talking about now, it's like a whole different scenario. You know, his wife, his wife says, pray for him. So the headlines are reading, John Gray um, is dying or something, you know what I mean? So they'll say certain things like, that make you click to see what they're talking about. Right, and some have even changed their story because his wife Aventer has come humble with regards to the story and asking people to agree. So now you even see people like Larry Reed and all these people who would have 
you know, bashed him before, you know, talking about, oh, I talked to them, I'm on their side, you know, we need to pray for them, because everybody wants to jump on the bandwagon of what the new sensational headline is. is. Right, yeah, I agree with And you. so I think that we have to be careful, um, because when you look at, I wanted to find specifically the Christian Post, their article, because, um, because, um, when you, you go to Black Enterprise or Mademoiselle or some of the other gossip or any of those headlines, their headline says that Creflo Dollar says tithing isn't biblical. And as I was looking through his teaching, and he's done several since. So it's June 26, he's done the misunderstanding, right? The, the great misunderstanding. Right. And then he taught a Bible study the week after, that, that Wednesday after. And then last Sunday, he continued to teach on tithing. And his title for Sunday was um, Tithing versus Liberal Giving. Right. Mm -hmm. So he's breaking it down and he says he's going to be talking about it, you know, as God has revealed some things to him and, you know, giving scripture as much as he can to give his congregation an understanding. And so Dr. Dollar don't care what we think, obviously, because, obviously, because <laughs> he, he don't care. He all he knows is a few controversial things. Exactly. Yeah. All he knows is that he's going to try to give his congregation what God has given him. Absolutely. And so he said he came humbly because he had to apologize that the previous teachings that he's taught weren't biblical. That's what he said wasn't biblical. He didn't say tithing wasn't biblical. He says what I had been teaching mm -hmm isn't biblical. So before we get into um, the understanding of, um, of, of scripture and what we like to teach on tithing and offering, let me read the article in Christian Post. Challenging popular evangelical belief, controversial <laughs> televangelist Creflo Dollar, one of America's most flamboyant proponents of the prosperity gospel, has renounced tithing and all his previous teaching on the subject as not correct. He also urged his followers to throw away every book, every tape, and every video I've ever did on the subject of tithing, but says he will not apologize for his error. In Sunday's sermon, Build the Great Mis Misunderstanding, the founder and senior pastor of the nearly 30,000 member World Changes Church International headquartered in College Park, Georgia, said he is aware that his declaration will cause him to lose friends and invitations to speak at other churches. However, he said he is convinced after studying Romans 6.14 that tithing is an Old Testament concept that has been retired in the dispensation of grace in which Christians should not be living. I want to start off by saying that I'm still growing and the teachings that I've shared in times past on the subject of tithing were not correct. Dollar began in his June 26th sermon. And today I stand in humility to correct some things that I've taught for years and believed for years, but could never understand it clearly because I had not yet been confronted with the gospel of grace, which has made the difference. I won't apologize because if it wasn't for me going down that route, I would have ended up, I wouldn't have ended up where I am now, he continues. But I will say that I have no shame at all at saying to you, throw away every book, every tape, and every video I ever did on the subject of tithing unless it lines up with this. Tithing, giving 10% of one's income to the church, is viewed as a biblical commandment by a majority of evangelicals, is what the Christian Post says. This is a right-wing paper. But, but only an estimated 13% engage in the practice, a recent study shows. The research also indicates that about half of evangelicals give away less than 1% of their income annually. Tithing has long been a contentious issue in many churches across America. In 2014, one pastor refused to host the funeral of a 93-year-old woman, telling her family that she was not current with her tithe to the church. In 2018, Grammy-winning gospel singer Marvin Wynes and the Perfecting Church in Detroit, Michigan, were, were sued by his former housekeeper, who claimed she was fired for refusing to pay tithes from her $18,000 a year salary. In an op-ed, the Gospel Coalition in 2017, Thomas Schreiner, the James Buckingham, um, Buchanan Harrison Professor of New Testament Interpretation and Associate Dean of Scripture and Interpretation at the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary in Louisville, Kentucky, outlined several reasons why tithing is not a requirement for Christians. 
the commands stipulated in the Mosaic Covenant are no longer enforced for believers. Some appeal to the division between the civil ceremonial and moral law to support tithing. Yet these divisions, I would observe, are not the basis Paul used when addressing how the law applies to us today. And even if we use these distinctions, tithing is clearly not part of the moral law. Schreiner explains in part, it's true the moral norms of the Old Testament are still in force today, and we discern them from the law of Christ in the New Testament, but tithing is not among these commands. In his sermon, Dollar appeared to agree with this interpretation, telling his congregants that they were not living under Mosaic law, but under grace. Um, so... Um, so they go on and they talk about some of the other stuff he was that was controversy to him as you know he it was one story about him um, police coming because he beat his daughter remember that one and so it was like a number of things that they they brought up about him so um, he w he goes on to say because not only from the um, the great misunderstanding message again he taught a Bible study after and then he taught it last Sunday. And the, the message he gave last Sunday, um, clear, he clearly said, I'm not saying to you that you shouldn't tithe. If that's what you want to do, he said, I'm just not going to manipulate you in thinking that if you don't tithe, that you will be cursed with a curse. Because giving should be cheerful. Giving should be something that you're willing to do and that it's not a scare tactic Absolutely. for you to do. So that is the full story um, from a Christ, the Christian Post. Of course, they kind of went a little left because they gave some other examples about how, you know, standards of how people operate. And I've known um, pastors to say they, you, they won't marry you, they won't bury you, they won't do anything unless you're a tithe-paying member in, in their church. So we want to hear what you think about uh, the story that we just read. Um, he, he did not say, I didn't hear him say, um, that tithing wasn't biblical. He went, he did talk about the teaching in the old Testament and he talked about teaching in the new Testament, um, and that we're under the dispensation of grace, but tithing ladies and gentlemen is biblical. Can we just make that clear? Tithing is biblical. All right, pastor. Jump well, in. I, before we do the teaching that Cheryl's going to share, mm -hmm. um, I, I agree, tithing is biblical. I also agree with the premise um, that Dr. Dollar shared in that it should be liberal, that it should not be done out of guilt. Right. It should not be done because you want something or, or you shouldn't be manipulated into giving. My understanding uh, um, um, about giving is this, when you take care of God's house, he takes care of yours. And because we do it liberally, and the other point to that is very, very good, is that we should all be giving based on what we've received. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, which means that one person may be able to give a whole lot more than the other, mm -hmm. but that doesn't minimize what the what that person maybe you gave a hundred and the other person gave ten that doesn't minimize the ten as a matter of fact if you look at scripture it deals with the woman that only gave a penny absolutely and he even shared in the great misunderstanding about the widow the widow might who mm -hmm. she didn't have anything absolutely. and absolutely. and god's and jesus's teachings show that she was the greater giver absolutely. because she gave all, all that, that she, she had, had. And it also, um, I, I referenced the, um, uh, in the Old Testament, it dealt with the woman who said, I'm going to make this last loaf, this last bread mm -hmm. for my, me and my son to eat mm -hmm. and, and die. Mm -hmm. And the prophet said, the man of God said to her, feed me first, yeah. which is the principle of giving first, giving first yes. to God. Yes. And he will make sure everything else. that your house is never empty. And it is the absolute truth because many of us here at Capitol, we've been taught about giving and we've been taught about the tithes. And we've been blessed by the giving and reaping Absolutely. principle. Absolutely. Because whether it's 10% or 20%, the giving principle works. works. 
And when you give God your first fruit, when you give God before you give anything else, we are a witness. And even though the Old Testament says that you're cursed, you will see how your pockets are emptied. Empty. Mm-hmm. When you haven't done, you know, but you because you can't and, and not that that's manipulative, but you can't go and be like and, 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 and be like, God, I need I need mil- a million dollars. And you haven't had relationship with him. Absolutely. You can't say God heal me and you don't even know who he is. Absolutely. He's still great, um, gracious enough because in this dispensation of grace, he's still grace to operate in his godness to do whatever he wants. And he can still heal you and he can still bless you. But when you're not in relationship with God, you don't even understand the principle the of it. The principle of it. And, and here's the thing. I shared this, I believe, with my daughter um, that we, we, we dismiss the scripture that says, um, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, and running over yep. shall men shall give. Shall men give unto you. And I yourself. remember, and I always share this, this testimony because it blew my mind when it happened. I had my two babies, Pastor Danny and I, we were, had the babies, we were struggling a little bit, and I had my tithe, my money that I was going to give to the church. And I was like, if I give this, I'm going to be broke for the next two weeks. Mm -hmm. But I gave it. And literally somebody put in my hand the same amount that I'd given in the offering. I have that testimony even today. I have that testimony even today. I know how my my uh, pay periods are set up. And so the first pay period of the month goes towards everything like they take out. And if I don't have like extra talent fees or any of those things, I know that that check is already allotted for what needs to be taken care of. And I just got paid on Sunday and I looked at my bank account this morning and was like, ah, really? Like, God, really? Like, I got things to do. Like, I don't get paid until the 25th. Like, gas is $100 a fill up. You know, like, what am I going to do? And just at, before I came here for Bible study, this is the absolute truth, and I couldn't wait to share it. Just before I came to Bible study, I've been contracted to do a um, women woman's conference, and they gave me 50% of wow. my talent fee that now sits in my <laughs> bank account. account. And I looked at, I said, God, you're having us teach on tithing today. The storms opened up. I was like, I got to get there, Jesus. I got to tell them that you've blessed. Yes. And that has been the principle of us giving. That has been the principle of us um, you know, being partakers in this ministry. That's been the principles. And every time when you think your barrel is empty, my Absolutely. God. Absolutely. Absolutely. Every single time. God makes a way. Makes a way. And, and here's the thing. I get that we're saying that that, that uh, Malachi was the <laughs> law, part of the law. But the truth is, when you think about what that scripture says, it says that if you bring the tithe and the offering into the storehouse, that there's meat in my house, I'll open the window of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Mm-hmm. But here to me is the key part. Mm-hmm rebuke the devourer so that whoever comes to try to take your stuff they can't take it and here's the thing even though we're under the dispensation of grace that portion of scripture god has given us old testament to give us examples Examples, because that's what it says So, yes, I agree that we shouldn't be guilted or feared into giving. But what we need to do is take that scripture in Malachi and apply it to our life, not as a fear tactic, but as an example example. of what God will do. Because if he did it in the Old Testament, he will do that for us. And no, we won't we won't have the repercussions because back then, if you didn't give, you were punished under the law. Right. If you didn't do this thing, you were punished. But, but let me just say this. That, so they didn't have money like we had it. They, they brought their livestock yeah. stock. They brought uh, what they, what they uh, picked from the land. They, mm-hmm. they brought all of that, and that's what they gave. Mm-hmm. But what they gave, they gave because they were grateful to God. 
that he made a way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They gave because they understood that it was him. Mm -hmm. You probably had those that gave because out of obligation, I ain't coming with nothing. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, many came and they gave because they were just simply grateful. Mm -hmm. That's what First Fruits was all about. It was all about showing God that I appreciate what you've done. Well, real quick, we go back to Cain and Abel, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And, and God accepted Abel's not so much because it was, quote, unquote, better than what Cain, because of it coming from his heart, mm -hmm. because of how he gave it. Yes. And because there was no, no nothing held back. Yeah. So the scripture, so the part of the message that stood out to me, and I put it on my social media that he says is, your giving is a response of God's ability to take care of you. So in my giving to ministry, it is literally my testimony. It is literally my witness that God has done this for me. Mm -hmm. And as I'm being blessed, I want to bless the house, right. right? So how I feel like it's a selfish situation if you can sit under this kind of ministry, sit under this type of life-changing word, and God has changed your life, and God has, has, has blessed you and opened up opportunity for you, for you not to give back to the very same place that has, made, has given life to you. Right. Right, right, right. That's what that, that quote says to me. Mm -hmm. So for me, it sounds like he is saying that you can give 10% if you want, because he even gave the example. He said, we want to hold on to that 10% thing because you want to be able to say out of obligation, I gave my 10. Now the rest belong to the me. The rest belong to me. Right, right. The right, rest right. belong to me. And that's fine. But if you have more than 10% to give, if there's a need in the ministry, if there's a need in the place where you're being fed, you can give more than 10%. More than 10%. Based on Absolutely. your income, you might be able to give 20%. Based on your income, but we feel like um, we, we're stuck at this 10% thing. And even if you say, I'll give 10%, but I'll do this in the offering, mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, then, yeah, yeah. yeah, and then, you know, you have to give according to the way God has blessed you. So I think that he's given this message to his church to say to them, you don't have to stop at 10%. You don't have to stop at 10%. I think about, um, went to uh, the Potter's House many, many years ago. We went for the leadership conference, my husband and I. And I remember Bishop Jakes asking for an offering of $1,000. And um, I was standing there. And really didn't have it to get, had it, but didn't have it, if you will. And in my mind, I thought, I get this to my own church. And God says, have you not been blessed here? Mm. And so right then at that moment, I wrote that check to sow in that place where I had been blessed. Mm -hmm. So I received that word. He did bless my life because we were young in ministry. And so I sowed in that place. And God has blessed me because I've been able to sow mm -hmm. in places where I've been blessed. Mm -hmm. And the thing we don't do, we look, at, we look around and see what people have and see how they're living. And we decide, no, I'm not giving here. No, you, you be a blessing where you're blessed. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I love Crystal's comment. One thing about me. <laughs> so I'm going to give. And that is the absolute truth. That's where I am. I, I'm, I'm, I'm in that space as well, Pastor, that if I have it to give, I'm going to, I'm going to give. I mean, not just even if I have it to give. I feel obligated to right, give. Right, right, I right. feel obligated to give. And, and um, not just to the church, but to things Absolutely. and people. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. If, if I have it. Right. You know what I mean? Because God blesses in those areas as, as well. well. And so how do how do we operate? How do we function in a, a ministry or in church without the tithe? Because that is where we come to bless the place that's been given out to us so that we can sustain, sustain. ministry. But let, look, OK, and I, I know we try to get away from Old Testament, but again, all scripture is given, yeah, right? Yeah. So if you go to the book of Hosea, I believe it is, the, the first uh, chapter in that book deals with God saying, the prophet saying to the people, y'all let y'all house dressing it all up nice and left my house desolate. Mm. 
And the truth is that's, that happens many times. I heard um, a prophetess Juanita Bynum, she was preaching at the AIM convention and she literally talked about how we out here getting fancy dresses, getting our hair done, our nails done, because we go into the AIM convention, and pastor got to work two jobs just to make mm -hmm. sure the lights are on at the church and that he can pay his bills at home. But we all fancy here. And, and literally, we don't think about that. Mm -hmm. Like, we run in the church, we dance on the carpet, we use whatever we use in the house. And I don't ever like to talk like this, but it's the truth, yeah. is that we don't think about what else has to be done what else has in to the be house. Done. Not only that, can I just say this, and not because I'm talking for myself, but the truth is, the tithe was also to keep the priest. Yeah. Yeah, it was to make sure they were cared for. Absolutely. And so here's here's the bottom line of what he's been teaching, because his whole series about is about denouncing religion mm -hmm. and how religion is stemmed in fear and guilt. Right. So his grace message is his grace message and that our relationship with God is now based upon his grace for dying for us. So when he talked about the tithe, he was talking about how we are not under the law. Mm -hmm. Right. Because in the Old Testament, when when they taught about the tithe, it was a law. And if you didn't tithe, then of course there were some consequences. And so we use that law in this dispensation to manipulate people into giving is what he was actually saying. Can I Trying just... to denounce religion, not the whole uh, concept of, of giving. I just wanted to read the scripture that he came from, that mm -hmm. Romans 6 and 14 says, mm -hmm. for sin shall no longer be your master because mm -hmm. you are not under the law, mm -hmm. but under grace. And that yeah. literally is his grace message. Under the so freedom under grace. of grace. Mm -hmm. It's under the freedom of grace because he died for us that we don't have to be hung at the guillotine because we didn't pay our tithe. Absolutely. And so what people do, and we've watched it over and over in our religious settings, that people will manipulate you into giving, into which is giving. why I love this ministry. And you might think, oh, I'm just touting a horn, but I'm not because this is this. Uh, we're very careful in this ministry not to manipulate people into into anything, mm -hmm. but to give you the truth right. about what happens when you give, right. about our own testimonies. Um, and, you know, I remember when Kayla was young and she had a, a, a friend who was, um, who was from India and they practiced a different religion. And she said, mommy, how do we know that Christianity is the um, religion, is the truth? And I said to her, I can tell you how Christianity is the truth based on how it is applied to my life. Absolutely. I can give you my testimony about what Jesus did for me. I can give you my testimony about hearing from him and being led by him as to how he's helped me uh, raise you as a child and how he's helped my marriage and how he's, you know, covered my family and how he's provided um, for us. I can tell you. Right. Absolutely. While we're Jesus followers. <laughs> right. 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 I could tell you why this is the religion. This is what we're teaching, not religion, but this is the relationship we're teaching you. Right. I could tell you that based on my own testimony. Absolutely. So is it is it the is it the religion? It is our religion. It is my it is my relationship. And with as God. for me and my house. As for me. <laughs> As for me and my house. Amen. So, um, so the whole thing I think has been sensationalized because Dr. Dollar has been is a, has been labeled a prosperity teacher, and he would have labeled himself that. Actually, he was saying, in his message, at the end of his message, if you hear, listen to the entire thing at the mm -hmm. end, he says, I know that y'all think this about prosperity, and it is, and I'm not going to deny what I have, mm -hmm. which is true. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, nobody's asking anyone to deny what they have. We just have to know what God has given us to do. That's Absolutely. My whole thing. Like, Absolutely. Don't go to uh, what, what, I, what I would tell people. Don't go to opposite either. Yeah. 
You know, don't be manipulated into giving more than what you have. Yeah, yeah. Because how many have done that? We've been in revivals, and our trustees can probably step up to say that when people have said, give, there's five people in here who can give $1,000, and somebody write a faith check of $1,000, right. that does more harm to the ministry than Absolutely. it does good. Because that check that we think is going to be there to bless the ministry is now going to bounce. Because you ain't really here from <laughs> God. You've been manipulated and to give what you don't have. And and to look like you have. I remember being in a service and this preacher who knew me called me out and said, McCrimmon, I know you got a hundred. Come on up here. I ain't had no hundred. And let me tell you what I will never do is write, write that check up. again. No, I didn't write it. <laughs> oh, I amen. wasn't getting up. Amen, amen. And it wasn't me trying to be disobedient, but what right. I'm not going to do is do something I don't have. Right. Or hear God, you know, because what he did say is hear from God what it is that you Absolutely. can give. As you're budgeting out your house, you know what I mean? Give, your, give what you believe you can give right. ahead of time. He gave the scenario about a young man who only probably only makes $30,000 a year, has a teenage son, and he has to give 10%. And he says, you know, I, don't, I can't afford to give 10%. Well, somebody mm -hmm. would say, bruh, you better give that 10% because God going to give it back to you, press down, shaking together. Right, running right, over right. and manipulate him into giving right but God is saying give what you can give if you can't do 10 percent do what you do five percent right now until you can work your way up to 10 or 30 or whatever you can because and I don't mean to yeah, interrupt yeah. you but this is key yeah if we don't do what we do out of faith out of if faith if we're not moved by our faith in God then it's sin anyway it's sin it's sin anyway I had a, a young lady who who really just has, has gotten into being in church and working in ministry and she was like I'm not up to where I can give all that you know the 10 percent and all that and I said listen give what you can mm -hmm. And be consistent. And as God is blessing, can increase it mm -hmm. and be consistent and watch God breathe on that. And that's the, that therein is what he's talking about, is that in a religious setting, we've told them, listen, you, if you do, give up your grocery this week, y'all go to Starbucks. y'all, And that's true. That's, <laughs> Starbucks is extra. But in this place, when we, get in, when, when we can't get gross, every time I go to the grocery store, nothing is under $100. Every time I go to the gas pump... You <laughs> and, Daniel, you know when you got a family, yeah. you got a family, right? Yeah. And so what used to be fifty dollars is now a hundred dollars. Absolutely. I was like, okay, this is this is crazy. This is off the not off the subject, <laughs> but we like that Capital City Mambo sauce, right, in my house. <laughs> and we go to the grocery store. I said, we, you know, now we looking at the price. I said, this set, this been seven dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at Dwight was cracking up with. We can right get this Chick Fil A sauce for thirty. I mean, for three dollars. I for three. I never knew Capital City Mambo sauce was that much money. Cause we like it, and right. we, usually you just throw it in the car. Right. Oh, we gonna support black businesses, support you know homegrown businesses. Boo, this thing seven dollars, boo, for a chicken dip. No, we are not. <laughs> We are not paying seven. We can, I like Chick Fil A sauce too for three. But let me so tell you, three let me tell you, and th that that right there is key because what <laughs> what what actually being disciplined in giving does <laughs> is it helps you to be disciplined in every area. Yeah. So even now, I might have the money, but I got to be disciplined because I don't know who might not who might need some help. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, you know, I mean, I say that as a joke, but <laughs> Crystal said, you got to carry the one these days. <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. Ooh, yeah, I'm Crystal. She said, moving your savings to your checkings. Girl, that's what I thought we was going to have to do this week. Praise God. When I saw <laughs> that the check ain't cover but let me tell you but God but 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 I, what the whole bottom line of this teaching is and I'm not I'm not a huge Creflo Dollar fan I'm not really an, a, a fan of you know any past I like the word if the word right, resonates right, right. with me I could listen to Jake's I could listen to Pastor Jamie I could listen to whomever I could find Jesus I'm like Mother McCrimmon I might close my eyes because some stuff I see might not be in order <laughs> but I can receive what God wants me to get from whomever Absolutely. so I'm not 
want to jump on the bandwagon, if you will. But if it's something that sticks out, that's resonating in my spirit, I want, I want to give the truth of what I believe that the people are Absolutely. saying. Absolutely, and that is where I was, which is why I made no comments, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. even on social media mm -hmm. about it, because I wanted to know, okay, what is the heart of this? So that's different when you when you listen to somebody, you're listening for, for where they are. You know, is he just saying this to get more money or is this really where his heart is? And so right. he's been on this grace teaching for a while, not not just the type, but the whole grace message. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> when I listened to him, I listened with an open mind, yeah. not already closed to he just trying to know. I listened with an open mind and I really did mm -hmm. agree with a lot of what Me too. What he said. Me too. I mean some like you said and Pastor my um my, my spiritual father will always say you have to say rightly divide the word of truth for yourself. No, Eat the meat and throw, throw out the, the bones. bones. Get what you know you need and, and study it. And and so um, that's why you're right some of the principles that he was teaching, some of the things he said made sense. And it is really not our place really to say, oh he He's just saying this because he can get more money. Right, and right, for those right, right. people, I mean, those people that are now saying, well, if he denounced and tithe, he need to give back yeah, all that money back, that don't people gave him. No, no, because they didn't just tithe unto him. They the, tithe the as unto God. As unto the Lord. Absolutely. And tithe op is, is what operates the church. And they've been doing it for years. So and they been knew his teaching and his lifestyle right. and all of that. Right. He so. don't owe nobody nothing. nothing. And Absolutely. the truth of the matter is, he said, when we walked into this building we're in, we walked in um, um, debt, -free debt free because yeah. of the people's giving. giving. And so, and so and I, I that's a selfish thought. Here. People you, need, I well, want to say this, Pastor, pa pa um, pastors and leaders who've been saying, oh, well, he need to give back all that money. They need to repent because now you're judging whether or not he used their tithe and offering the right to get. Way. Right. And that's what I wanted to say. Listen, you've got folk been sitting under people in a school for years talking about we got a building fund. And still ain't in no building. Driving Jaguars. But, and that that's one thing that I declared when I when I accepted and said yes to the Lord, is that I wanted to do it as unto him. And when you have that heart, then you want your people not to <laughs> not to just be going from place to place and playing. It's like buying a house. I don't want to pay pay rent, pay into a building that we're never going to own. Mm -hmm. And so as pastors and leaders, the money that comes in, the tithe and the offering is not for you to get rich. Right, right. It's to do ministry. It's for you to do ministry. I love what Christina says. Um, she says, there's no substitute. Choose another area to save. Because we will say, you know what I mean? And the reason I think pastors and leaders have said, give the 10% ahead of time is because people will use other areas to spend their money. Absolutely. And will say, I can't give because right. I need to get shoes or I need right. to... You know what I mean? And like Christina says, if your mindset and your hot posture is to be a blessing to the house, then you will give. You will give. You will give your 10%, you'll give your offering, and then everything else. You would budget that already in. That will be your first, first fruit, fruit because it is the intent of the heart. And Absolutely. if I'm making $250,000 a year, I'm going to give more than 10%. I'm going to give Absolutely. as God has blessed me. Amen. To God's ears, as Crystal says. If when I'm making $250,000 a year, when I'm making Three hundred thousand dollars a year. Come on, when we, I make it five hundred thousand dollars a year, can I get ten? That pastoral offering <laughs> will increase. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. Daniel said we're blocking Crystal because she wants a block a ride around the block in, in his jet. jet. Well, I think I should at Amen. least get a ride. You know how the saints do. <laughs> at we, least I'm... we pay for this. I should at least get a ride around. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. So, um, so, you know, I do, I, every time we do Bible um, study, I pull from my Bible Tools um, app and, and look for different topics with regards to what we're talking about. And they did a money series called Tithe and Offering. And so um, I want to share a little bit of that. I want to hear from you guys, though, too, 
on based on what we're saying. If you agree with what we're saying, if you're still unclear, if you have a Absolutely. question, um, if you have a question towards our pastor, our leader, the men, you know, our leader of this church with regards to what we believe and how we tithe and how and the principles that we that that's been taught here. If you have questions, we want to answer them. If you're still unclear, if you're still believing, you know, that what Creflo Dollar is teaching is wrong. You have a right to believe you that. Right we want to hear what you have to say um, with regards to this conversation. You know, when we talk about money, we get tight lipped. We want to hold on to our right. purse. I see Sister right. Sheila on here, Sister Ursula. I see some of the trustees on here who probably is waiting, wanting to hear what we have to say because they know. They know what the expenses are in this ministry. Absolutely. They know how we operate um, in, you know, with, with our finances. And I love that we're in a good place in our finances because the people are giving, those who are watching online is giving, and I can almost guarantee you that your testimony is that God has not forgotten you because you have not forgotten to give to the ministry. You have not forgiven to, to, to sow into fertile ground. We sow into some crazy stuff. Peter Popoff water we right. we so to some we Ooh, so I was into just looking at that the, the other morning right and, and no and nobody is you mean and ain't really nobody ain't it? nobody write an article about that yet like ain't nobody talking about <laughs> <laughs> ain't nobody talk about these prayer clubs shawls really that they don't and we should really be ain't nobody talking about the prayer shawls that folk are buying and that they got from china and thinking that this is from israel and the holy land like ain't nobody talking about that Talking about manipulation, that's Absolutely. exactly what he's talking about with regards to this religious bandwagon, because we will jump on everything. Absolutely. We will jump on the sensation of stuff. But when God shares truth, then, of course, you know, he was like, I don't care. Nobody invite me out anywhere anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and tell you what God <laughs> shared with me. All right. The money series. The moment most people see or hear the word tie, they immediately think of the church and the corruption. More than likely, thanks to popular news articles and or movies or TV shows, the church has received a, a pretty bad reputation when it comes to money. Now, at the same time, we are sinful and still in a sinful world, and I know we are capable of making mistakes, so I'm not making any excuses for churches that have made mistakes when it comes to financial management. If there ever been, if there's ever been corruption, it should be addressed and just, justice should prevail. But what doesn't get talked about a lot is how tithing is still for today and how many churches and people get it right when it comes to finances. There are millions of examples you'll never hear about on the news and they won't make a movie about it either, about you tithing. tithing. I'm going to yeah. tell you, the other week when Daniel got up and he started talking about how the principle of tithing has blessed his family and how he mm -hmm. saw the difference, that therein is the witness Absolutely. that therein is Absolutely. the news when we can literally talk about as i said today when your bank account is literally near zero and god automatically blesses, blesses you, you to get through the week based on your commitment mm -hmm. you know what i mean Absolutely. then you all then you automatically know that this principle work there are people that are in a worldly position. There are people who are in the music industry who may never ever go to church, but they know the sowing the and reaping fact, absolutely. and they will bless based on the principle, based and God principle. continues to mm -hmm. bless them absolutely. because the principle works. Can I say that 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 uh, tithe, uh, tithe and offering and giving generously in ministry does not just flow back in dollars and cents, if exactly, you will, but it opens doors. Mm -hmm. And it brings promotion mm -hmm. in areas where we weren't even re expecting it. Yep. But just allowing God to, uh, putting him first mm -hmm. <clears throat> means that he meets the need, whatever that need is in your life. I love this teaching, and Sheila would appreciate this. But he, he goes on to say, our author says, the word tithe means a tenth. It represents a minimum Mm. Not a maximum okay. of giving. Okay. And so what we do is we take that and make it our maximum, mm -hmm. which is what I think Dr. Dollar is saying. That it's not just about the tenth, it's about what God, how God has blessed you 
to give. So the tenth represents a minimum, right. not a maximum. Not a maximum. Okay, mm -hmm. we as followers of Jesus are called to tithe and be generous, especially since Jesus was so generous to us. What most people think is that tithing is an Old Testament principle and it's not for us anymore. However, tithing can be found in three primary areas of scripture. Adam gave a tenth in Genesis 14. Malachi 3 and 10 is where we always talk about, talks about how God validates the tithes and says to test him and giving and what will never outgive and will never outgive God. And then Jesus in Matthew 23, 23, he, re he refers to this in his message too, corrects the Pharisees or how they were tithing and redirects them for what they should do with the tithe instead. By doing this, we can see it's still clearly a New Testament principle. Jesus validates it and makes sure the heart of generosity is present when tithing, not selfish motivations. Because Matthew 23 talks about the boaster, when the boaster was like, but I tithe, but I give, but I right, this. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right. Mm -hmm. And Jesus was saying it should never be a place. It can be a witness. It can be you sharing to say this is what happens when you do it, but you should never be boastful, boastful. about it, right? Absolutely. You should never be like, oh, you can't, you don't tithe, so you ain't this. I'm this because I tithe, right? Mm -hmm. It should never be in a boastful position. And that's what Matthew 23, 23 is saying. As Jesus demonstrated grace towards us, he always raised the bar from the law. Grace raises the bar in everything. Um, this means when it comes to tithing, our goal shouldn't just be to hit the tenth and be done, but rather use the tenth as a starting point and increase from, and there. Increase from there. Okay, and I think that's based. That's the gist of what I think he's teaching in this dispensation of grace. The tenth goes to the local church as the church accomplishes what God calls the body to accomplish. Money towards those efforts come from somewhere, and it comes from the tithe. And just as a reminder, Christians are called to be a part of a local body. All of us have roles to play, and the church community is a, com is a command, not just a suggestion for us. We are called to be in community with others, not live our lives in isolation. And I was just sharing that. I want to put, put a pin there. I was just sharing that with a girlfriend of mine who, you know, is in a, a bad space and was talking about how she, you know, how depression was kind of you know, overtaking her, right? And I said, but but you want to, but you've been isolating yourself from people, and now you're allowing that to be a breeding ground for the enemy mm -hmm. to bombard your mind. You, this is what assembling yourselves so, among the saints absolutely. will do, because when you assemble yourself around like-minded people. Their testimonies help us get through. Our conversations, I think after church, we sit in here as long as we've been in church, and we're talking about what God has done. We're talking about each other. We're fellowshipping with one another. Absolutely. And one of the things I realized in growing my relationship with God, I love my what my daughter is doing. She's found a community. She's mm -hmm. found a community of young people, like-minded people, who will, who will walk this walk with her, where she don't have to be one way with them and one way in the church, Absolutely. where they can all walk in, in harmony. And that together. That's mm -hmm. what really helped me when I found community, mm -hmm. when I found a group of friends, a group of people who were like-minded and our desire was to please the Father, that helps you. Absolutely. So when you sitting home with the covers over your head and you by yourself and you isolate, I just don't feel like people, I just don't want to be out, I just don't want, you're allowing the enemy mm -hmm. to get into your head. And so that's what I want you to understand that when we're tithing, we're building a community of people, of like-minded people who can come and gather. It's nothing like you saying over the pulpit, next Sunday we're going to have dinner here at the church. And every, I mean, it's just such a fun fellowship for us to get together. What are we eating today? Right, you know what I mean? Right, to right, get right. together and just fellowship with one another. So it is the word of God that sustains us and leads us in prayer that helps us get through it. But when I can, when I can be in, in fellowship with you, you know, in the park, if I can be in fellowship with you at the dinner table, if I can be in fellowship with other couples, then what my, what I'm going through isn't going to be so, so foreign. Absolutely. So when we're talking about the principle of tithing, you understand it's helping us to build that community. Absolutely. Keep this in mind. This isn't giving. Jackie said, what time is dinner? <laughs> Amen, Jackie. We would love Hi, to have Jackie. you for dinner. <laughs> love you, sister. Uh, amen. And so Sheila says, talking about your time and talents. Amen. Keep this Crystal in mind. I had a question. Oh, what Where was your question, question, Chris? So does that mean giving with our service and time counts, especially if we do not have money in a season in our lives? Absolutely. I would say absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Because again, it's about your heart. Mm -hmm. So I know that I can't necessarily bring money to the house, but I mm -hmm. can come and I can work in the ministry. I can stand at the door. I can clean the church. Mm -hmm. It is about what's in your heart mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to do. So Weldon Hemphill says there's there are too much politics in church when it comes ties. I pay my ties and move on. Absolutely. But here's the thing that I realized too, um, Weldon, about the politics. You don't have to be involved in it. You do not have right. to be involved Absolutely. in the politics. <laughs> and I and, and the thing is, and if it's especially if it's vexing you, if you see what's happening behind the scenes that's vexing you, you don't have to be involved in it. And I worked in every um uh, uh, you know facet. facet of the Kojic church mm -hmm. with regards to and I'm just speaking about Kojic because that's what we are. I've worked on the international level, the regional level, the jurisdictional level, and the local level. And when it comes time to doing what I'm called to do, I do what I have to do and I move Keep on. It and they Absolutely. gossiping about what they talking about, what the bishop did and what they didn't do. and what I don't want to hear that. I don't want to have nothing to do with that. I want to focus on the ministry that God has given me. I want to give what I need to give people out. People are blessed. Absolutely. And I just want to move on. I, you don't have to deal with the politics of the church. As you say, give your gifts, give your offering, do what you do to build the church on your own accord, and let God deal with them. If somebody is mishandling your money, let God deal with them, because trust me, he, they will be dealt with. Mm -hmm. They will be dealt with. Absolutely. They will be dealt with. All right, what are some of the other count, uh, comments? Otis said there's even a spiritual gift of giving. Amen. Absolutely. It sure is. Absolutely. It sure the is. Gift of faith. Yep, 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 yep. So block, who, why are we blocking Jackie? Okay, there's an, <laughs> all right. Because right. he need a cake. Amen. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, the point of giving is more about generosity and stewardship than just a tithe. Jesus is our example of being generous towards us as we follow him. We are to be generous towards others. The only cure for greed and selfishness, both of which are thinking what we have is ours, is to give it away and be reminded of who it, whose it really is. This means we need to be regular givers, and it needs to be proactively a part of our plan, not just when we have some money left over. Right. Amen? Right. So then what is an offering or other giving? The tithe is responsibility for the follower of Jesus towards the local church, and offerings and other givings are opportunities to bless others and to continue to be generous. We always want to seek out additional ways to be generous financially with others. So maybe the tenth is your obligation to give to the church, but then your offering would be to another auxiliary or to the pastor or to pastor's fund or just to give extra to the church, to the church. right? As, as God has led you to do. So oftentimes you'll see the church do the tithing, who, which is literally done towards members of the church. And then there's, the, um, then there's their offering for people who might be just visiting or just if you have extra to give, all right? How do I set up tithing and offering other giving in my budget? As you make your budget, if the budget isn't balancing to zero, reduce the tithe line last and not before working out your other category lines. Uh, this should be your first line and top priority in your budget. Don't put that at the last yes, thing because right. if it's the last thing you have, oftentimes you won't have it to give. Also, separate tithing and offering other giving in your budget versus having it all lumped together. That will help you stay on track. Offering or other givings does not have to be your local church. That's the tithe, but it can be. If the Holy Spirit says give offering money to the church, then you need to do that. And at the same time, God may lead you to um, designate offering and other towards organizations like Compassion or, you know, some places, Salvation Army or, or whatever. So um, I think that's just clear. That's clear cut. Um, what we do, we made tithing a priority from the beginning, and over time, we've added additional giving. Is what the author is saying personally of what they what they do. But that's just the bottom line. It's just as simple as that. I love how uh, co-pastor Susie put it many years ago. Um, I think she was at Refresh, mm -hmm. and she said that um, our giving is our rent to be here on earth. Ooh. I was like, okay, mm -hmm. all right. It's, it's what we pay to mm -hmm. the landlord mm -hmm, or give mm -hmm. back to God because honestly, the giftings 
and what we have and our abilities to do, he gave it to us. He gave it to us. And we could never outgive him. We could never, never outgive, outgive him. him. So I pray that this teaching is good. And if we could just take our mouths off of people. Absolutely. He could, he could have been teaching an erroneous teaching. But I just hate how the how mainstream has made it sensational and how we as believers jumped on the bandwagon. Jumped on it. Without, We're just and like as I bad. said, before I said anything, I wanted to hear hear the yep. entire thing yep we're just as bad we're just as bad as you know as what they're blaming him to be when we start saying little stuff like well then maybe he should give it back maybe he shouldn't have got a jet maybe the church wanted to get him a jet absolutely Maybe they wanted to, to do this fundraiser. Maybe his auxiliary. Maybe he, you know what I mean? We don't know what happens in their house. And we got to take our mouths off of people. If it's corrupt, God will show, show it. it. God will, God he will, will reveal it. He will reveal it. It's not our place. And that's the enemy's tactic to get us out of right standing with God. Yep. Amen. I'm done. We're done. <laughs> We're done. You We're guys done. have any, any questions? Anybody have any questions? Because I do want to make sure that we we have an understanding and we leave with the understanding that, um, you know, tithe, tithing or giving is biblical. It is a principle. Yes, yes. And, and the thing is, we don't give goats and cows and all that. We give our money mm -hmm. and we give it to the house of the Lord so that the house can be built up. And let me just say this. The more we, we people always look for the church to give away food and give away this and they looking for. But the truth is, the church can't do it without the giving Absolutely. about without the people giving. Yep. It is impossible. We're not a First Baptist of Glen Arden where there's millions of dollars coming in. And it wasn't always that for First Baptist Church Absolutely. of Glen Arden. Absolutely. They had humble beginning. They they're at the place now where right. they have and and they've been you know and now they have greater responsibility. Yeah. So yeah. it's just like anything else. The more you have, the more you require. And so you know, just because they are this big ministry, don't doesn't mean that they don't that, that they're not still paying you know based right. on what they have right, right? right. so and we use we, we we use that misunderstanding. But but I also I just want I just want us to be mindful uh, you know when we put our mouths on people and when Absolutely. we when we take stuff and we sensationalize it it just really gets under my crawl and especially as a journalist i want to make sure that what i'm sharing is the truth and we take these headlines and we run with it and they're yeah. ready and so for me it just grieved me to see the believers jump on that bandwagon. It grieved me to see pastors coming for him. Mm -hmm. And what ha what really was happening, Pastor, is they were threatened that the people will hear what he has to say and, and stop that they giving. Because I'm I'm going to be honest and say my, that was a thought in my head. Oh my God! So now people really, you know, you get your, you get ministry and and people are really giving and then your thought oh my god now the people gonna stop giving because everything high anyway and all they needed was a reason absolutely but what i declared was i'm not saying anything on on social media until i hear the whole thing right out. and when i listened to him i did not get the sense that he was trying to uh, tell people not to give he more so in the message he was saying that you're you cheating god more yep right Absolutely. Yeah, that uh, that's what I got from the message. <laughs> right. Is that y'all stuck on this tenth? But you should be giving more because you have more to give. Because we're under the dis dispensation of grace, and God has graced you, and now now that you've been blessed. Now, if you don't have, we understand. But right. I don't want y'all to get stuck in thinking you got to give ten and give, give from he, your heart. And that's and why he kept pushing. That's why he said your giving is a response of God's ability. To take care to of take you. Care and if God has taken care of you, you need to give. Willingly give. Willingly give. Willingly give. And so that's where, like I said, pe pastors and leaders began to sh get shaken before they even heard the, the message, message right. and started denouncing. How, how dare him? Because he got a jet. All right, pay back all that stuff that they, they gave you then because they were afraid. Now you talking this, then my, my, my offering is going to go down. Right. My tithe right. is going to go right. down. Absolutely. Instead of doing what we're doing and teaching the principles Absolutely. so that people will know that there is a blessing in giving. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. That therein is religion. You manipulating <laughs> your believers. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Absolutely. I'm done. And being insecure. Mm -hmm. If God called you, then he's going to provide. Mm -hmm. That's just how I live It's the my absolute life. truth. It's That's the absolute truth. 
All right, we're done. I know they about to cut us off. Right, okay. All right, so Pastor, uh, so thank y'all. We're, we're thinking you guys don't have any other questions or comments. Has this been good for you? Come on, give us some hearts or some clapping hands or a witness hand or something to let us know that what we're teaching is good. Is that good? <laughs> Nicole looking like that was cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Charmaine Hill. Oh, district missionary. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. She said, Dr. Dollar taught about sowing into people because you needed a harvest and he was the God of more than enough. We sowed into our pastor in Philadelphia when she was alive because we needed a certain down payment for a house in Northern Virginia. We told her why we were using her and God gave us more than enough. Thank you, pastor and evangelist for taking this time to give an understanding. Amen. It is our Pleasure. Pleasure. Thank God for, for the leading of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the fire. Thank you for the hands. And it's only by example. Absolutely. We're able to really um, talk about it with, with passion. Yeah. Yeah. Because he has done so much. And like I could tell Kayla, I can tell, I can tell you what he's done for me. Absolutely. Just on today. Absolutely. I can tell you what he's done for me. Amen. Absolutely. And so you may have that same testimony. Thank you for your testimony, District Missionary, and yes. thank you for joining us. Yes. Amen. That's it for us That's tonight. It. That's it. That's thank it. you for joining us for our topical Bible study. I'm not sure what the topic is next week, but join us. <laughs> join Pastor. But I because I won't be here next Tuesday. But join us. We you know we have have prayer Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and you can get the, the prayer line number on our website at capitaltemple.org or right here on our Facebook, Facebook page. page. You can look at any of the photos and get the number to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 12 noon here in the sanctuary we pray. Awesome. We pray on Sunday after Sunday school, Sunday school nine. We pray right after that into our Sunday morning celebration. We would love to have you. Thank you for joining us online. If we have been a blessing to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Give and it shall, shall be, be given, given to you. Press Absolutely. down, shake it together run and it run over. it over. And that is not a tactic of manipulation. <laughs> that is the word of God. Word of Ladies God. and gentlemen, um, please give. You could give through Givelify. You could give through Cash App. You could give through our website. And for our members, members. we are really stressing Thank that you use Realm. Realm that you use Realm. Our trustee Help board has set Ghost. up Realm uh, for our members of Capitol Temple. So you don't have to give through Cash App and those other places. <laughs> give through Amen. Realm. All Amen. Right. Pastor, close us out. Please. Amen. Thank you all again for joining us. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you. We thank you, uh, God, for what we've shared on tonight. We thank you, Father, for just your presence in the midst of us. We thank you for the ability to laugh and the ability God, to even discern who you are and what you have for us in this season. Father, I pray that you would bless those that thought it not robbery to hear and listen and then now take what they've heard and walk by faith with it. We thank you, Father, for you are God and above you there is no other. God, I pray that you bless the tithe and the tither. I pray that you bless the offering and the giver. God, I pray that your word be manifested in the lives of your people even on this week. I pray for those who are sick in their bodies. I pray healing now in the name of Jesus. Look on Brother Massey tonight. God, touch his body. Strengthen him even the more. I pray for Paris's son. I pray, God, you touch his little body, that you strengthen him, that you heal him, that you make him whole. And then I pray you give his mom and his dad peace. Give them peace and rest. Father, we thank you for all things. Look on John Gray tonight, God. Continue to touch his body, his wife. God, we just pray for, we pray for people everywhere. And we ask, God, that you be manifested, that, that you, your love be manifested, that you work miracles on behalf of your people. In the name of Jesus, and we thank you for it. Amen.